Hi there, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric's Trains, and today I've got sort of a spur of the moment video for you. You know, it occurred to me recently that I do a lot of product reviews for engines, diesels and steam engines and so forth, and occasionally I review buildings and some passenger cars, but I don't do a whole lot of reviews on pieces of freight rolling stock, you know, box cars, tank cars, flat cars, stuff like that. And the reason I don't do them very often is because one freight car by itself really isn't interesting enough to warrant doing a whole video on it. But, you know, pieces of freight rolling stock are very cool, and there's a reason why we buy them, and there's a reason why I buy certain pieces. And so, what I thought I would do today is share with you some of the pieces of freight rolling stock that I've acquired over the last maybe 6 to 12 months. And that way you can kind of see what I like to buy and maybe get some ideas for yourself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Up first, we've got this MTH CNO chassis system rapid discharge car. And this is brand new. I just picked it up from Legacy Station a few days ago. And it's a very nice car. And believe it or not, even though I have hundreds and hundreds of freight cars in my collection, this is actually the first rapid discharge car that I've ever bought. And I was motivated to get it mainly because of the Chessy logo, because I've got a Russian blue cat named Chessy, and so lately I've been buying a lot of Chessy stuff. And as you can see, it's a very nice looking car. It's got, you know, of course, die cast, metal, sprung trucks and couplers. The hatches down here don't open, but that's okay. There's nothing to dump out of them anyway. And the paint job is perfect. It's, it's typical MTH. And then you've got this load up here, which comes out like that. And because it's white, I'm assuming it's not a coal load. Rapid discharge cars were best suited for aggregate, like gravel and stuff like that. And so I'm assuming that's what this is, is a load of gravel or something similar. Uh, but yeah, it's a really nice car. It rolls nice and easily. It's not super heavy, but it's not a lightweight either. It's just perfect. Up next is another car from MTH, and I actually got these at the same time that I got the Rapid Discharge car. This is a TTX flat car with a green pipe load. And I actually got six of these cars because MTH sometimes sells their cars in six packs and four packs. So I like these, so I went ahead and got six of them. And it's a really nice car. It's a typical MTH flat car underneath. They've been making these for a long time. Very nicely detailed, just like all the other cars you're going to see. Die cast metal trucks and couplers and some nice underframe detailing as well. And of course the paint job is first rate because this is made by MTH. And these green pipe loads, well the pipes can be detached like that. And I imagine these represent PVC piping that might be used for drainage or sewer lines or water lines or something like that. I'm not a plumber, so I wouldn't know for sure, but it's pretty cool. And this car also serves a dual purpose because have you ever been to a fast food restaurant and then you get home and you realize they didn't put a straw in the bag for your drink? Well, if that happens, fear not, you've got a bunch of spare straws right here. Hmm. Not bad. Up next is another new car from MTH, and this arrived in the same batch as the other two cars you've seen. And these are Army flat cars with the half-track vehicles on top. These half-tracks were used in World War II. And this is not a mere toy half-track. This is a fairly detailed model. I don't think it's made by MTH because on the bottom it says War Master. So I imagine they probably outsourced these from another company but these are very high quality, very detailed, and they have a really good weight to them. I've actually broken a couple pieces off of these while handling them, so they're fairly delicate, but they look great. And of course, it's on your typical MTH flat car with a simulated wood top. Very nice. Now, the inspiration for me getting these was that I have another set of cars in my collection, and these are MTH TTX flat cars, and on each flat car, there are two M1A Abrams tanks in the desert camouflage paint scheme. And I keep those cars on the layout most of the time because they are extremely popular. Without a doubt, those cars are the most asked about 
cars that I have in my collection. Of all the engines I have and of all the pieces of rolling stock, I get the most questions about those cars because people just love them. And they always ask me where to get them and unfortunately I have to tell them, well, you can't get them anymore because MTH hasn't made them since they came out around 2007. I'm not sure why they haven't made them since. They've made stuff that's very similar, but they haven't made those exact ones. Hopefully they will at some point in the future. But yeah, those are awesome cars. They originally made two six packs, and foolishly, I only got one of the six packs. I should have gotten both six packs. So I've got six of those cars. I wish I had all 12. But because those are so popular and so cool, when I saw these in the latest catalog, I decided to go ahead and get them. They weren't offered in six packs, but instead in four packs. And so I got two four packs, so I have a total of eight of these cars. And uh, yeah, they're really nice looking. Really glad I picked them up. Up next, we have this Lionel Georgia Marble PS2 covered hopper. This is not brand new. This was cataloged in 2017, and I believe these shipped sometime in 2018. So I've had it for a little bit, but it's still fairly new, and I really like it, so I thought I'd share it with you. These are really well made. They have a good weight, and as you can see, there's lots of fine detailing all around. I like the black ends. It's kind of cool. And up on top, all of the hatches open up like that. It's pretty neat. Now, I got this one because it says Georgia on it. I live in Georgia, so anytime there's a train that says Georgia on it, I usually get it. And that's why I just ordered the new Stone Mountain Railroad GP7 that MTH just cataloged. But yeah, these are really nice. Here we've got another hopper. This is a Conrail 70 ton covered hopper, and this one is made by Atlas. This, again, is not brand new. I think I got it sometime last year, but it is such a nice model. Just like everything that Atlas makes, it's absolutely gorgeous. The detailing is first rate, as you can see. But what really makes this a standout model is its weight. This thing is super heavy. They've got metal weights inside, and it really weighs a ton. You know, a good O-scale freight car will usually weigh in at about 14 ounces or so. The Lionel hoppers that you just saw, they weigh about 14 ounces, which is normal. This one weighs 1 pound 6 ounces, so that's 22 ounces. So this thing really has some heft to it. It feels like it's made of die-cast metal, even though it's made of plastic. Now, just like on the Lionel model, the hatch is open, but they've got a little more intricate mechanism up here. You pull this back, and once that's pulled back, then the hatches will open. Up next, well, this is something new. It's been out for a little bit, but I just got mine a few days ago. This is, of course, one of the new Lionel Union Pacific LED flag cars that they put out. And they did a number of these in different paint schemes, but I decided to get the Support Our Troops version. And what makes this boxcar special is that on the flag, the stars light up in a dark room because they have an LED panel mounted behind them. Now, some people have complained a little bit about the stars not being very bright, so let me show you what that's all about. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on first. So the power is on, and as you can see, you really can't tell much of a difference, and that's because it really doesn't show up well unless you turn the lights off. So let me go ahead and turn the lights off. All right, I've turned the lights down, and now you can see the LED light behind the stars. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. Now, yeah, you can't see the stars lighting up under normal lighting conditions, but in my opinion, that's really not such a bad thing because under normal light, you can see the white of the stars anyway, and it looks like a normal American flag. And it's not until it gets dark that you really need to have that light there. And of course, once the lights are down, it looks really cool. Now, I suppose they could have made the whole thing brighter by using individual LEDs inside each star, but they didn't do it that way. I'm guessing because it probably would have raised the price of the car a bit, and you'd also have to drill larger holes in the stars to accommodate those individual LEDs. And so what they did instead is they drilled tiny holes in the stars, and then behind the whole thing, there's a single LED lighting panel. And in this way, I think it looks better. You get a nice uniform lighting experience, and you don't have any unsightly big holes or unsightly big LEDs poking out of those holes. 
And you know, the fact that it doesn't show up under normal light, I think that kind of adds some mystery to the car because under normal lighting conditions, it looks just like any other box car. But once the lights go down, that's when it really shines. All right, this is the last car that I'm going to show you today. This is the new Lionel Freight Sounds tank car that just came out. And it kind of works like the old Vision Line ethanol tank cars, if you remember those. I did a review on those many years ago, and this is sort of similar, except it's much simpler. It doesn't have TMCC or Legacy on board, so it's an independent sound car. But all of the electronics are in the tank, including the sound system. And then it's got sensors on the wheels so that when you move the car, you get some freight sounds. Like that. Pretty cool. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to ask, so I'll just go ahead and say it. I'm probably not going to be doing an in-depth review for this car. And that's for two reasons. Number one, it's a very simple car. Aside from what you've already seen, there's really not that much more to talk about. And number two, Lionel released a Vision Line Station Sounds baggage car not too long ago. And so I'll be reviewing that instead. All right, that about does it. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, if you would like to be a sponsor of Eric's Trains, you can do so through Patreon. Simply go to www.patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. And remember that first class sponsors get their names listed at the end of every Eric's Trains video while they're a sponsor. So in just a second, you're going to see a bunch of names scroll by. Those are the names of my first class sponsors, and I am eternally grateful to them. But for now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. Did you think I was going to end this video without running some trains? Don't be silly. <laughs>